So sometimes when you are doing a lot of photography, you start wanting different backdrops and backgrounds, and it's one thing to go out and about and find them on the streets. You can also have multiple rolls of different colors of seamless paper or fabric or whatever you want in the studio. But sometimes it's nice to step outside of all of that and think what would be the optimal situation or scenario or look and feel that I would want and how can I create that in my own space? So what we've done here is brainstorm an idea of these cherry blossoms in the wind and having a lot of movement and feel. Um, I worked with an artist who painted it and uh, this is constructed of two four by eight plywood boards. And so these boards are uh, four by eight individually, but they're going to be put together in a way that makes for a relatively seamless eight by eight block. What we've done is ensured that they are stable. By putting this mount in, um, it is holding it in place. And separately from that, there is these pieces that have been cut to fit up and down to frame this to kind of make sure it's solidly in place and the combination of putting all this together and one even on top when we move it over secures it and keeps it all together and very very safe as a backdrop. There's a few things going on that makes this really work. One, it's obviously the wood and the wood is a good choice for a couple reasons. One of the key ones is it doesn't bend or warp. The other reason why it's really good is because you can put a paint over it, any sort of paint. Underneath this is a chalk paint, a white chalk paint, and that allows us to have a lot of vibrancy on to, to be able to paint on top of. We've got this as pinks and grays and such, but we also have a bright blue, very vibrant bright blue background with a huge burst of sunflower over it. Um, we have mandalas on a bright white background with little golden butterflies. We have a lovely kind of reedy, flowery kind of scene again. So being able to assemble all of this together not only enables you to have a bunch of different look and feels, but you can create something that you like and then just paint over it and start again and start again. And whether it's something that's an actual image that you wanted to put together, or if it's something that is just paint splatter, or I want this color this day, or, or I want this fabric or pattern or whatever, you can get super creative and stamp things all over board and just paint and start again. So we just changed our set around. We were shooting against the mandalas and the butterflies and now we pulled in this amazing painted sunflower on blue sky. And we've got our lighting set up to be, they're all the Westcott Flex lights and we're shooting with a main light. We've got some fill and we have a little bit over here. We've got this natural light coming in and everything's color balanced to make sure we don't have any issues with that and we're gonna bring our little model in. We're gonna do some wide shots that are really bright and cheery and fun, and then we're gonna start mixing it up and have her you know, be standing in a bit more of an environment. We're gonna add some elements. That we're using the butterfly theme throughout everything, so we're gonna add some butterflies in here as well, um, bring in some wind and have a bit more of activity going on with our model in the scene. And then just keep shooting around, get some more close-ups, put on a long lens, and get a good variety of looks out of this one situation. Time to edit our favorite images with these backdrops in On One Photo Raw 2018.5. Okay, so I am back from my shoot. And while at the shoot, I do what I always do, which is make sure I download the images while I'm still there. Um, I would go in here and just drop them all into what I call an originals file. These are every, this the file contains every image I shot raw, 46 megabyte files. Um, just thrown right in here. So as you can see, adjusting the lighting, doing the styling, doing the outfit changes, this is all just straight out of camera. And because I'm in this raw previews fast mode, they will load up this quickly, which for, for someone who used uh, bra the bridge mode in Photoshop forever for calling, uh, this is crazy. It's just psh, all right in there. So I love that. And one of the other things that's pretty great is that I know right from here I can go in and adjust on the fly. So I'm in browse mode. I pull up file. I'm looking. I can e either make my selections here, move on. I can go back and compare with other images if I wanted to see a couple together and see how that looked. Um, or I can just simply go in find the image I want to do something with and just pop over to effects. And since I have built up a bunch of presets, this makes my life so much easier. I mean, this is so 
fast for me to be able to process images like this. I can either create a preset right here and just follow it the whole way through, or I can grab one that looks pretty close to what I want to do and make my adjustments as I go. And then once I have that preset, I can obviously just apply it to everything that is a similar lighting ratio and go from there. I shoot everything in manual mode and in a neutral or natural uh, color profile based on what you're shooting with, which means I don't want my camera to add any effects to it. I want to do all of that in post where I have a more powerful take on it. So if I click something like this, which is oversaturated and a little bit over orangey and red for my taste, but you can see that how quickly it applies the effect. And if I jump back into browse mode as I'm going, that effect has already taken. I can also do this right from here without having to go into effects. If I wanted to just, if I wanted to just throw down a preset, but since I want to do some adjustments, I'm going to click back into effects and uh, make a few changes that I would want to make here. Again, I think that's just a little oversaturated for my taste. I can say, hey, yeah, the auto works well. I'm going to cool it down. Um, I just want to manage some of the effect. I can make all those changes right from here. I might just click to an auto mode just to manage that a little bit better. And as you can see, that happens right there. And I can go to each of these sections and determine what it is that I would like to change. Maybe I want to bring up a little bit of the shadows. Uh, maybe here I want to see if I even want this photo filter added on. I think I do, but I just want it toned down a little bit. And I can see every single one of these adjustments as I'm going. Click back into Browse. And once I've created that, I can create that as a preset and just apply it across everything else. Uh, but I can also just say, hey, I want to do um, a really quick black and white on this. Let's just go right into my preset modes. I'm still in this raw, fast mode. Um, maybe it's, uh, just pick one that seems like something I'd want to do. Make that change right there and continue on. It really is that fast. So to be able to work like that at that speed from just straight original raw files out of my D850 has really changed the game for me. It's pretty incredible. I am loving the pace of this.